Oh yeah. <laughs> Main thing we've been dealing with on this trip so far is a uh, rancid smelling car. <laughs> we've had a few issues of smelling half and half and other items with the baby and the dog. So we're dealing. <laughs> Dealing at best. If that's the worst problem that we have, I think we're doing pretty good. Minivan life. back of my mind I always knew I wanted to have a family but it wasn't necessarily something I even wanted to admit to myself I was just so focused on skiing that I just kind of pushed that pesky thought out of my head and then there's a point all of a sudden <laughs> when it was like oh man there's some things I want in my life and they're not the type of things that just can happen overnight I want to lay some groundwork and have this happen and more or less like a certain way and when I thought about okay this means we're gonna settle down and <laughs> have a kid I was so curious am I am I still gonna be the same person am I still even gonna want to go skiing am I gonna have that same drive so there's a lot of questions in my mind of who am I gonna be and how will this change me I thought about motherhood and also my skiing. I think there's just a lot of uncertainty. I just figured that probably all my sponsors would drop me and I would just become a mom that really loved to ski. But I kind of had a glimmer of hope that that didn't necessarily have to happen. I don't think any one of us is like, I'm gonna have kids and just stop having fun. <laughs> For so long, my identity was I'm a skier, this is my life, and I am travel for eight months out of the year, I'm barely ever home, I'm just looking for the next trip, the next thing, the next line. And so it was a big adjustment, moving here to Leavenworth, kind of out in the sticks and changing my life. But it also felt right at the same time. That desire to change my type of skiing was a byproduct of wanting to have a kid, but also I think it's just where I'm at. Originally, the idea of doing lift access lines happened before I was even pregnant. I go on a lot of trips and I get to go on helicopters and travel around the world, um, but really I love lines in a resort where you can hike to it, doing laps, everything about it. And I love taking a skiing road trip, connecting with friends, meeting new people, um, going to places I haven't been before. A lot of the ski movies now are these people going to far off countries to these super random places, but to have a good ski trip, you don't need to go that far, really. Just hop in a car and drive, and you can make it somewhere new and cool and have a great experience. So I started thinking about that idea, and I was talking with a friend, and they were like, oh, top lift access runs, there you go. I was immediately latched on to that idea. Then I got pregnant, and so we pushed it back a year, and then it was about, can we do this? with a baby. I don't think I've ever seen a road trip with three generations and a dog. <laughs> we weren't expecting Steve and Betsy to come on the whole thing. We were thinking maybe a little bit, but then they ended up coming on the whole trip and it was great to have them along because it allowed Ingrid and I to ski together in the mornings and 
They were able to spend quality time with Eddie and they were able to get to ski nearly all the same runs and same resorts that we did. Um, my parents were on the volunteer ski patrol at Crystal Mountain for over 20 years. And then when I was probably 16 or 17, they became members of a big ski lodge there. We started out patrolling at Crystal uh, in, in like 1971, and then a chance came to join this uh, Edelweiss Ski Club, one of the Forest Service uh, ski cabins up there, and we jumped on that. Ingrid was feeling a little isolated, so she started ski racing and got more friends that way and got to spend some time with some good kids. It was a family experience that we all shared, and I don't think there's any regrets uh, by the kids at this point in time. Crystal's where I grew up skiing, so it's one of my favorite places on the planet, if not the most favorite place on the planet. Also, it's where Jim and I got engaged. Okay, you've done that before. It's just such a special place. It's like a vortex of good times. We started with the easiest ones because the places I know the best and love the best, but I think it was a really good way to get our feet under us and get a rhythm and figure out our plan and how this is all gonna work. We're gonna go up Crystal Mountain. Uh, first thing in the morning here, super nice. We're gonna meet with my friend Kim. She's the patrol director here. She's been on the patrol forever. I've known Ingrid since she was nine and uh, I've been familiar with her rise in the ski industry and uh, she comes and skis here at Crystal quite often and I always try to take a couple laps with her. Well, we're at the top of the King. It's a typical classic Washington weather right now, I'd say, but we're starting our trip. Top 25 starts right now. Parking lot, Stevens Pass. Just up from our house in Leavenworth. Stevens Pass, it's not the mountain I grew up skiing, so I'm still learning it, but the more I learn about it, the more I really like it. Right behind us, right there, is Cowboy Ridge, which is an amazing run. Probably a million different ways to ski it. If you took the time to poke around in there, you definitely have to know where you're going. It's pretty gnarly, but it's an incredible run. One of the coolest things about skiing is showing up in a new place and meeting someone and instantly knowing they're a skier, we're gonna be friends. We're gonna have something to connect over and I think just trusting that something interesting is gonna happen is a really huge part of it. Gobbles is representative of the training that Mount Biker has. It's all really steep and there's tons of trees and super cool pillows, little like islands with airs off of them and just really fascinating, playful terrain. bring the energy of I'm here for one or two days I want to make the most of it and the people that you're skiing with that live there they have the energy of I want to show you the best time at my mountain even if the snow is maybe not the best you still have an awesome day because you have the two levels of psych coming together and just like whipping up into a huge frenzy of fun that's like the heart of what skiing is and so it was a way to be able to do that 
and take the winter and just go see our friends and go see new places and just really have fun skiing lifts. Mr. Blackcomb is probably one of my favorite resorts in the world. It's huge. There's every type of terrain, really long runs. You can do laps on amazingly long runs. And when we were there, conditions were really firm and windy. <laughs> but the upside of that was there was not really anyone there. We had the place to ourselves. And there was amazing wind buff in Spanky's Ladder. Just like a huge river of wind buff. Spanky's is definitely top run for me because you can't really see it from any other chairlifts or anything on the mountain. So every time you venture in there, you're kind of going at what comes at you, which is really fun. It's kind of an adventurous style of skiing. It's a place I'll keep going back to. I've connected with a ton of people that are parents already or people that are just new parents or thinking about becoming parents and just you just realize how many people want to be able to have families and also continue doing what they love and skiing as much as possible and um, still being themselves. So it's nice to connect with all those people and feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not the one crazy person that still wants to ski as much as possible but also have a family. It was cool to see Izzy skiing because it brought back the memories of skiing with Ingrid when she was pregnant, knowing how exciting it is. Izzy is a great skier and you would have never guessed she's pregnant by the way she's skiing. She's ripping her powder like no big deal. We're at Rebel Stoke after an unusual dry spell. It started snowing when we were there, which was great because then we got to ski Rebel Stoke in powder conditions. When we were staying at Rebel Stoke, it was snowing at a pretty good pace that evening, so I was able to put Betty in her little snowsuit and take her up there and get some shouldn't deep powder. It was a memorable experience for sure. Revelstoke has probably the most vertical of any place that we went, and Kill the Banker is right under the gondola. It's a really long run, and it's such a good vantage point for the whole Kill the Banker run, so it was, seemed like a perfect way to try to film it.
kicking horse has big terrain, like big mountain skiing. We'd never been there before, had heard really good things, but we show up and there's a local skier, Drew Whitstock, and Emilio, who works for the mountain. I think sometimes people are like, oh, there's a film crew, we gotta go take him to the NAR. And we were like, first thing in the morning, and they took us to the steepest chute that was all billy goaty, and you had to work your way around these trees and do kind of some climb down maneuvers. And then it kind of opens up um, into this really steep, sweet powder chute, but it was like first thing. And then, you know, that was our introduction to kicking horse. I was like, oh, all right, this is, yeah, this is real. We just had an amazing day there. Kicking Horse was definitely one of my favorite resorts that we went to on the whole trip just because they have such incredible terrain. The north side are all these steep chutes and more technical terrain and the south side is all these nice open sunny tree pow shots. Well today the sun came out and it's insane to be able to see everything and see all the mountains and the valley. We've seen like at least 82 rainbows. We've got fun people to shred with, Brenna and Drew again. and. Uh, it's really extremely magical out here today. That's the cool thing about places like Interior BC is I know that there's awesome people all over. Just getting to actually see them and ski with them feels good to get to do that with so many people in so many cool places. today. We got to Fernie. It's been dumping, but we have no idea where to go. We've never been here before. So we're just like trying our best. We'd heard about this awesome skier, Andrea, who some friends of mine knew and said we should ski with her. But trying to meet up on the mountain was proving to be really difficult. And then that's the great thing about Interior BC is all of a sudden we end up on the lift with a super nice woman. It turns out it's her mom. And she gave us her phone number. And we called up Andrea and she showed us around and so she knew exactly where to go. That was gonna be the best skiing on any given day. Fernie, we were there on a storm day. It was like really kind of foggy, there's good snow, but not great visibility. And we want to go up the top lift, but people are like, no, it's not that good. You won't find anything. So we kind of got talked out of it. And sure enough, we're like skiing underneath, like traversing underneath the run. And my mom comes ripping down right under <laughs> where people told us not to go because it would be too gnarly. Steve and Betsy's enthusiasm makes it a lot easier for us to be a ski family because they have set such a great example. Well, I think it was cool for me to do this trip with my parents because they did this for me when I was little. Like everyone says, oh, it's so cool to watch my kid ski. Well, it was cool for me to watch my parents enjoy all these places. I think when you're raising children, you're values, it comes out whether you're consciously thinking about it or not. It, the child can see when you're having fun. I think being able to have something as a family that we all still love to do and we all still really can connect over is pretty special. To be out in the mountains and see my mom rip some turns or hike up a peak is really cool and I think it's still the way we connect. I mean, I lived in Squaw for almost 10 years, so Squaw to me is one of my favorite mountains. We got to Tahoe when it was like a 10-foot storm, and there's a perfect kind of snow 
that Tahoe gets that's like maritime and it's really silky, but it dumps enough that it's still somehow light. And I think it's the snow that you can ski the fastest and still be in control. There's nothing like that first run down KT or something at Alpine when it's that kind of snow. We had an awesome morning at Squaw Valley and now we are headed over to check out Alpine Meadows with the entire family. Jim definitely took one for the team this winter. He put aside anything that he had going on to support me and that's huge to have a husband that's comfortable enough with himself that he can say I'm gonna put aside everything, take care of the baby and you and drive the car and the packing and all the stuff that he did to make this happen. Yeah, I'm gonna do a lot of baby time this summer. <laughs> it's gonna be great. I'm gonna love every minute of it because it was such a huge gift that he gave to me and Betty. Here we are at Sugar Bowl. I'm here with world famous Inger Backstrom, professional skier and my wife. We're gonna go ski powder. Ralph, for some reason, had a turkey in his freezer and he decided to do Turkey Tuesday. And so they made a massive turkey dinner for my dad's birthday. Had some friends over, all the family together, and uh, it was just kind of a beautiful thing of them to do. And one of the things that made the trip so special. It's been uh, pretty exciting to watch the, the kids evolve into their position in, this, in the ski world. and. Betsy and I just truly enjoy being out skiing and knowing that, you know, Ingrid has, has accomplished what she's accomplished with her career and what uh, Ralph and even Arnie accomplished in their, their careers is, is a, uh, a source of joy. It's been fun to watch. And this new phase, adding Betty to the mix for, for Jim and Ingrid has been really a, a nice uh, transition. It's, it's gone uh, uh, so far much better than I hoped. Mammoth is one of the biggest, most wide open areas that I've ever skied. From any lift, you can just go in any direction and it gets this special kind of wind buff that I haven't seen anywhere else. Just the winds honk, the mountains are really high and just like kind of grooms everything over with snow that almost moves under your feet as you're skiing. So the mountain's kind of moving with you. Life on the road. Well, last few days we've been in Colorado. Skied Aspen, drove three and a half hours. Skied Silverton, drove three and a half hours. Skied Crested Butte, drove three and a half hours. Well, we haven't skied Crested Butte yet, but we're about to. Then we're gonna drive three and a half hours. The trip itself, I guess it was pretty daunting to be like, are we really gonna make it to all these places in one winter? At first it's like, oh yeah, it'll be easy, we have all the winter. And then once we started going and realizing how much it took at each place to try to capture the essence of an entire mountain in less than a day is really hard. We're at the top of the Big Kuar, at the top of Lone Peak at uh, Big Sky Resort. It's just an awesome run. Such a sweet, long, big pool. The trip was definitely a logistical challenge at times. I'd be in the car feeding Betty, hanging out with her, singing in the back seat, and then also trying to plan our tickets and everything we needed for the next couple of spots. We're 
at Bridger Bowl, which is awesome. We're here with my friend Vasu and some other new friends that we met, and uh, it's been a while since I've been here, and I'm really psyched to get back up on the ridge. I think there are a lot of things that were way more challenging than I expected. The moving so much and so often, packing and unpacking that frequently was really a lot. But in the same way, it was also so much more awesome. And by the end, I kind of almost got into it. It was like, it didn't matter if I didn't get any sleep, if Betty was up, if we got somewhere late, it was just like, I love this. I get to be with all the people that I love and I get to meet new people, see friends. We're skiing every day. I get to ski with my husband and know that my daughter is doing great. I can do it. I know you can. All right. <laughs> I think it looks gnarly. I'm like totally <laughs> embarrassed. I'm totally gonna just back out of Corbett's and not do it right now. Three, two, one, drop. Oh my God. Damn, that's my husband, woo! <laughs> Silverton. It's one of the coolest ski areas anywhere. Just like one lift and then this huge ridge that you hike and uh, dumped probably 40 inches or something in the last couple days before we got here. So, and now it's Bluebird. We are so psyched to be here. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> We're just on the Gold Hill Ridge. We'll come out right at the bottom of Palmyra, which is closed, which looks like an absolutely amazing mountain to ski. Uh, unfortunately, they've had too much snow and aren't able to control it. So uh, we're skiing all this other rowdy terrain that Telluride has to offer. It's such a cool place. Say bye, Telluride. Say bye bye. Bye bye, Telluride. So when we started, Betty was nine months old. We were on the road for 45 days out of the winter. And when we finished in March, she was over a year old. Like she had her first birthday um, during the winter. Um, she started walking during that time. She was talking of a storm starting during that time. And we also got to have this amazing trip. Fired up to give her that experience that she'll only remember through pictures. <laughs> But it was really cool just for Ingrid and I to be able to do that and know that we can still do that, I guess. Is, I think it's just setting a good precedent for the future. I'm excited to show this to Betty at a certain point and be able to show her what her parents were like when she was young and what she was like and also just tell her all the funny things she did and how feisty she was in the car and if she wasn't constantly being sang to or entertained or like <laughs> played with at all times, she'd get fussy and all those little things that um, you get to get a glimpse of her personality. I hope that this somehow sinks in for her. Maybe not immediately, it might be a lesson that's learned over time, but what's important to you is worth sharing with your kids and enduring some logistical challenges and tough moments and tense times in order to have the big, awesome experiences 
that you can look back on and you only remember the good stuff.